<sighs> you know, gluten is such a big trend in the food world these days. It seems like gluten free is just the way to be for some people. But why the sudden change? We weren't hearing about gluten this much 10 years ago. But you know what the worst thing is about these food fads? How uninformed people are. I don't even think most people know what gluten is. You know what though? There's a food so perfect, so simple, that anyone can understand that gluten is what really makes it. understand what gluten, how gluten is used, we need to look at how it's created, what it's made up of. So here, look, come, look at this. To understand gluten, we must first look to the wheat grain, which has a similar shape to this. There is a bran layer that forms the outer sheath covering the grain. The interior is composed of the endosperm and toward the bottom, the germ. The germ contains all of the DNA and most of the fat, while the endosperm contains most of the energy in the form of starch. All-purpose and bread flours contain very little of the germ, but more of the endosperm, including lots of protein. Two different protein structures, gliadin and glutenin, are where the real magic of gluten happens. When they are mixed together for the proper amount of time in the right way, they form the substance known as gluten. Gluten is a stretchy mesh structure that makes yeast-based bread products possible. See, now that we know that wheat flour is where the protein can be found, and we know that bread flour is the wheat flour that has the most of this protein, bread would be the perfect food to demonstrate gluten. So with that in mind, let's cook. But first, the hardware. You will need a medium to large size mixing bowl to mix and or rest the dough in. A flat, sturdy work surface to work with the dough on. A pizza stone, pizza pan, or baking sheet with no large edges. Or you could use one of these, available at your local hardware store. A serrated or bread knife. Now we get to the software. You will need one pound of bread flour, one teaspoon of instant rapid rise yeast, two teaspoons of honey, two teaspoons of salt. When measuring out your dry ingredients, always make sure to level the top with a flat object. 10 ounces of bottled or filtered water. To construct the dough, we will be using the well method. On your work surface, make your flour into a mound and hollow out a well in the middle of the mound. You will then add about half of the water, the yeast, honey, and salt. Carefully begin stirring the middle, gradually bringing the flour into the center. Don't add all of the water in at once, or you could be in danger of springing a leak in your wall like I do. Once the mixture is somewhat combined and not sticky, get in with your hands and finish working the dough together. Work the dough for about five minutes or so, then place into a greased bowl Cover with a kitchen towel and leave to rise for 20 minutes. After this time, the dough should have nearly doubled in size. After the dough has had time to rise, cover your work surface and hands with flour. Place your dough ball onto the board and begin kneading. First, just start by pounding the dough out with your knuckles. Then fold the dough like a trifold wallet and then pound it out flat again. Repeat this process for 5 to 10 minutes. Cover and let stand for another hour. 
Add some water to an oven pan or dish and place it in the bottom rack of your oven and preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Sprinkle some cornmeal on your baking sheet, then place your dough onto it. Combine a third of a cup of water and two teaspoons of cornstarch, then brush this mixture in a thin layer onto the dough. Use your serrated knife to make three to four half inch cuts into the top of the dough. Place the dough in the oven to bake for 50 minutes. It's out of the oven. This has to cool for another 30 minutes. But while we're waiting, you can see how gluten is a powerful ally for bread-based foods, but for some, gluten has negative effects. Some may have almost an allergy to gluten, or a condition uh, or disease called celiac disease. The definition of celiac disease, according to the Celiac Disease Foundation, is an autoimmune disorder that can occur in genetically predisposed people, where the ingestion of gluten leads to damage in the small intestine. It is estimated to affect 1 in 100 people worldwide. When someone with celiac disease eats gluten, their body mounts an immune response similar to other food and non-food related allergies. The immune response targets the villi, or small finger-like projections, in the small intestine. This is problematic as the villi serve as the site of absorption for many nutrients that are needed to keep our bodies functioning properly. Due to how detrimental to your health celiac disease can be, the only treatment option currently available is complete adherence to a gluten-free diet. This means avoiding foods that contain wheat, rye, and barley. Now that is some gluten in action. We've seen how gluten is formed. We have made the simplest food to utilize the structural power of glu that gluten possesses. We have learned why some can't handle gluten and why it can be beneficial, crucial to become gluten free for those who suffer. But most importantly, we have learned that when used the right way, gluten can be 